Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Quarantine Cuisine. I'm back. I missed you guys last Monday. Had a little bit of technical difficulties, so I'm back and ready to go. Um, today, we are going to make really, really, I, I like to call it weeknight fried rice because fried rice, if you go to a really good, either um, like a Japanese like a restaurant or, or a Chinese restaurant, sometimes it, they have them at, at either one depending on where you go to. If you go to a Japanese where they have a hibachi, which may be like a Benihana or anywhere that, that has that, you may see a version of fried rice. And there's, I can never get mine to taste like theirs. Um, but basically what I do is something that I want to make during the week that's easy. It's all in one meal. It's got my protein, my vegetables, and it's, it's easy and if there's usually leftovers. So the way that I do it is I cheat a little bit, which I think is okay. Um, obviously we all know what's, what the components of fried rice are. It's usually white or brown rice, um, vegetables, um, some type of meat. It could be, I'm going to use chicken breasts today, but it could be shrimp. It could be beef. It could be tofu, whatever you pork, whatever you, whatever you like. Usually there's some eggs in it. If you like eggs, um, there's some onion and some garlic and some teriyaki sauce. There's a lot more fancier versions as, as it gets going, but I think, um, my version is going to be tasty but simple. Um, so one of the things that you can do if we start out with the protein, which is the chicken, um, you can do a couple things. Obviously, if you have, um, you know, a chicken breast or chicken meat, you can you that's in your freezer and you want to cook it, you can do that. Um, or sometimes I would grab like a rotisserie chicken. Um, on my way home from work and I would cut that up and use it. Or if I'm really cheating, really, really, really cheating, um, I have them wrapped in a bag because <laughs> truthfully I was going to use these. These are Foster Farms grilled chicken breast strips. Um, they're boneless and skinless and um, they're just they're, they're pre-cooked little strips. You can stick them in a salad. You can, you know, make a taco with them, a burrito. You can also use them for fried rice. This is what they look like. They come in a bag. They're usually like in the deli section um, at your grocery store. I was going to use this today to show you how easy it can be. They're already even diced up. You know, I would might dice them a little, a little smaller. But unfortunately, when I went to take them out of the fridge today, they were expired. And I just, I just got What, normally it's not a problem, but um, this is a really good tool. Costco has a version of this. This version is okay for grocery store time, Safeway, wherever, but Costco makes a really yummy version. Um, and it's been so long since I've been in a Costco or had any Costco products, but if you go to where um, like you can get the chicken and apple sausage or any type of the prepared meats, they have um, these chicken strips. It's in a two pack. They look like they're, they're like grilled. They've got the little grill marks on them, but um, they are so delicious. They actually are, taste really good, like real chicken. These are good, but they have a little bit of a processed taste to them, if I'm being honest. Um, but the ones at Costco, I think it's like nine or ten dollars, and you get a, you get a two pack of them, and it lasts. It's good for salads or or whatever. So there's some great products out there if you don't want to have to cook your own chicken. Luckily, I had chicken in my freezer, no big deal. So easy peasy. Um, the other thing is is that you can use um, fresh vegetables if you have them. I like to use frozen peas and carrots. They cook really fast. You know, during the week, I just get, you know, always have them in my fridge. It's easy to add to soups or whatever you're making. This time they did not have frozen peas and carrots, but I got a bonus. It's, they gave me on my grocery order, frozen peas, carrots, corn, and string beans. Ooh, I think there's a couple lima beans in there, but we'll pick those out. Um, so, you know, frozen vegetables are good. They're flash frozen. They're convenient, much better than canned for you because um, these don't have any salt or anything added to them, and you can just toss them in. Um, and then I also have some um, chopped onion that we're going to use, some chopped garlic. Um, I think I made a typo in the paper or a typo was made. Um, it is not a third of a cup of garlic. That would be a lot of garlic even for this Italian girl. Um, it's, <laughs> I think it's like a third of a taste, ta tablespoon. So FYI, when you see that, you'll probably um, gawk a little bit or, or kind of go, whoa. Um, 
one of our people chatting on here, um, Christy asked, can you use cauliflower rice? Yes, cauliflower rice would be awesome. You know, that's kind of the new thing if you don't want to use um, white or brown rice. Cauliflower rice is delicious and it will fool you. So good, good one. Um, and I don't like peas, I like lima beans, you are correct. Okay, for today, I had um, white rice, that's what I had on hand. Um, one of the things I like to use, I always have this on hand, I'll just show you what it is, um, is because my I have a little Shih Tzu and she has a temperamental tummy and so I always have instant white rice on hand in case her stomach gets funny. But these are, um, these are minute white rice, they come in two little containers that look about this size, which is the perfect, and they're pre-cooked. So it's this is the perfect serving for this recipe, both of these. Again, this is the lazy man's you know, way to make <laughs> fried rice. You certainly can boil rice or do it, it any other way, but this is an easy way. I like the brown rice, but this is what I had on hand. This is the white rice, it's made by minutes. So portions are good, and again, it's pre-cooked. The thing with making fried rice is, you don't wanna put warm rice into this and try to make everything and add everything. I learned this the hard way a long, long time ago. When you use warm rice, it's, it, just, it, just, it just becomes like a big sticky ball with everything. You need to use your rice either cold if you're gonna pre-cook it, let it, stick it in the fridge and let it cool down, or if you use a product like this, the rice is already cooked, it just needs to be warmed up, and I mean, you've had it in your, in your pantry so it's not hot. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I did turn this on a little bit early because we all know if you've watched my class that this burner is, eh, it's okay. Um, okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to add um, some onion and some garlic. So I'm adding the onion, I'm adding the garlic, and we're gonna saute that up a little bit, and we will also add the rice. So we're get, gonna get that going, we're gonna saute that up. I can hear this actually making a sizzling sound, so that means that it's hot enough. Usually this, like I said, this burner's a little on the temperamental side. So while this is sauteing, you're gonna go ahead and add your rice in. Okay, so I'm adding my rice in, and now I'm gonna saute that up. I'm gonna turn this up just a wee bit. Um, to get it going. Sometimes when you, and I broke mine up a little bit just so you know, when you um, open those containers of rice, you're going to want to break them up. I broke mine up before I, uh, and stuck them in a bowl, before I put them in the pan, because they're kind of, you know, it's like a clump, but it breaks right up really easily. It's just that, um, you know, how it's packaged. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So there's still a couple little clumpies, so I'm breaking it up here. Again, it breaks up nicely and separates well. You don't have to worry about that. So I'm sauteing that and letting that go. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to add um, the chicken in here. So I did um, two chicken breasts. These were really big chicken breasts, so <laughs> You may not have uh, <laughs> as much chicken as I am gonna add into mine. I, I took these chicken breasts out of the freezer and I gasped, they were so big. So um, sometimes... Right now, where I left off, we are sauteing. Um, we're getting the, we got the rice going and the chicken and the onion and the garlic. And now we are going to add our frozen vegetables, a cup of those. Thank you, I'm glad I see some of you are back with me. Thank you for not turning off, <laughs> turning off your, your, uh, your, ch your YouTube channel and you're your watching me, thank you so much. Um, so again, just to recap, we, we sauteed our onions, our garlic, um, we put our chicken in here, our white rice, and a cup of our frozen veggies which have mostly everything I like, um, with the exception of the lima beans. I'll tolerate the peas. I'm grown up now, but I used to really hate peas. But I've grown to like peas, but lima beans are kind of a no-go. I'll pick them out later. Um, so now everything is nice and sauteing. I'm gonna add a little bit of soy sauce. Um, I'm, I'm really kind of light with the soy sauce. I don't like to go too crazy. I just like to add a little bit. The good thing about soy sauce is, you can always add more, but if you overdo it initially, you're in trouble. So 
it's kind of hard to undo that. Okay, so everything is sauteing. I'm gonna turn this back up a little bit more. And this is looking good. So we've got, you know, our rice and our veggies, our yummy chicken breast, and our garlic and our onions, which I love. Um, okay, so we're doing all that. I'm gonna let that saute up a little bit. One of the last things that I do when I'm going to uh, make fried rice is I is I saute, is I cook my egg inside of the pan. Um, one thing I already did was I already took two eggs, cracked them in this bowl, and just kind of whisked them together. When you do the eggs, that's gonna be kind of like the last thing that we do. Um, one of the things that's important is, is that you don't just throw, you know, I used to do this. I used to just, you know, put all the egg mixture in here and mix it all up, but then it just got kind of got clumpy. So what I do is I like to create, um, after I'm done sauteing everything nicely, is I like to create a little pocket here. I mix the egg up so I cook it enough and then I mix the cooked egg amongst all the fried rice mixture. So it just makes it taste a little bit better, I think. Um, and it doesn't give it such a clumpy, you know, I feel like it, it gets too clumpy if you don't. And the reason this cooks so quickly is everything that you're adding has already been cooked, right? So we talked about the chicken that you can buy already cooked, the chicken breast, or if you wanna use frozen shrimp would be awesome in this. Um, but um, if you decide that you, or you don't have any of those um, convenient chicken options available, like myself this morning when I discovered that was expired, um, I just um, cooked some chicken quickly while I was working. So I've been working from home. I didn't want to have to stand over the stove and do it. I just quickly diced up the chicken, took, uh, took a cue from sheet pan dinners, put it on a cookie sheet, put a tiny bit of olive oil on it just to keep it moist and baked it for 375 for about 30 minutes. It was already diced and ready to go. And then I chilled it in my fridge. So, you know, some easy ways on how you can do it. The vegetables were frozen, the rice was pre-cooked because we used the minute rice. So again, you can do this the easy way or you can do it along kind of, you know, the traditional sort of drawn out way. But the reason I like this is, is that um, this recipe will serve two to three. I really think if you have a fair amount of chicken, um, like I did, it's, it's, it's two chicken breasts, but you know, like I said, mine were larger ones um, this morning that I took out of the freezer. You could really do um, four people with this. Now, I said in my article that I like to serve this with um, like Trader Joe's um, Yoiza or spring rolls. They're really good if you kind of want to go with the whole theme or green salads, always nice too or by itself, you don't, you don't have to do that. Okay, I'm creating a pocket, which I just wanna show you. I'm creating a pocket to do my, I'm gonna turn this down a little bit, to do my um, eggs, because now we're moving on to the final step. So I'm pouring my egg mixture in here, and again, I already had a little bit of olive oil in the pan, so I've already, you know, my pan is coated, I don't have to worry about anything. I'm just gonna cook this egg in this pocket, and then I will mix it with the lovely fried rice mixture here what well, and this is a this is the type of meal that I would say you could freeze um, because it, it would actually freeze really well um, if you're if you're doing meal prep a lot of people are doing meal prep using the cauliflower rice if you don't want to use you know white rice or brown rice if you're watching your carbs um, you definitely could um, could could you know this is keep in the fridge for at least a couple days a few days um, the other thing is, if you, you, you can buy gluten-free, if you buy gluten-free soy sauce, then this is a gluten-free meal. So I used to be gluten-free for a very short amount of time. I'd say, well, I may say for about over a year because um, I thought it would help my anemia and it kind of didn't. I, I really didn't see a, a big tick in numbers. Um, anyhow, and I honestly didn't feel that much different, I gotta say. But any, anyways, I learned a lot of little gluten-free tricks. My mom is gluten-free. And um, this is a good recipe to make for people that are G-free. Um, you can get gluten-free um, soy sauce very easily. Um, most grocery stores have it. I used to get it at Safeway by my house. And um, so I didn't have to go anywhere exotic to get it. Um, if you would like to, to recreate this, you can definitely do that. Rice is gluten-free naturally, so are potatoes things to keep in mind if you, you know, 
are G-free. You probably already know that, but if you have to cook for a family member that is, it's something that you you learn. So what I'm doing now is just getting those eggs nice and cooked up. I'm still keeping them separately so then I can add the cooked version of the egg to the um, to the fried rice mixture. Let's see while this is cooking if anybody's got any questions on chat. Um, okay. Did anybody catch while I'm while I'm making this egg could I cook? I hope those of you that are watching tonight got or listening in today got a chance to see the our first recreation department had our first live broadcast on Channel 28 concert virtual concert last night. So um, it was awesome, and we got such. Um, wonderful emails from many of you saying how much you loved it. So we are still putting together some really great quality entertainment for you and trying to keep keep you um, occupied and entertained. And hopefully as things keep opening up and changing and evolving, um, we, will, we will get to do more and more and more and kind of come back to what we love. Because I can tell you that we all miss you. And we miss being able to do the fun events and activities and just interact. I just miss residents coming by my office and chatting and catching up. And, and um, I just, I miss that part of my, my job a lot. So looking forward to seeing all of you. But for right now, we have to do it via, this, via uh, <laughs> virtual, virtual reality right now, right? That's okay, though. It's only temporary, right? Okay, we are getting near the finish line. I promise you that when you cook an egg at home, it will go way quicker than the version that I'm doing here in my little, my little pretend um, studio. It's just not quite the same as my stove. It's okay, but you probably are thinking, man, how long does it take this lady to scramble an egg? Um, I'm asking myself that as I'm doing it, but um, <laughs> it's because I have this little burner set that's hey it's doing the job but it's not exactly perfect um, okay all right so I think we've got the egg nice and cooked so now that I have the egg cooked I'm gonna go ahead and add it to my fried rice mixture yummy I love egg in fried rice it calls for two I would even be happy with three eggs in here because I like eggs and I think it's yummy in a fried rice mixture Okay, so I'm just kind of chopping everything up. I'm mixing everything well. I'm going to do a couple more splashes of, um, of soy sauce, and then I'm going to say that we are almost done mixing everything up. It smells so good. You know, I always try to eat my lunch before quarantine cuisine because otherwise I'm starving by the time I get out. So I always try to to eat something and I did today. I had a, a yogurt and some leftover strawberries, but I can tell you it wasn't enough because this smells really good. <laughs> so normally when I do quarantine cuisine, whatever I make is what we have for dinner. So this will be our dinner tonight. Um, okay, and there you have it. Um, it is ready to go. Looking so yummy. It's so hard to see it on, on camera, I'm sure, but it's got all the color of the nice vegetables, the egg in there, the chicken, the rice. Perfect. So I want to thank you guys for tuning in. I'm so sorry about my technical difficulties. That hasn't happened yet, but you know what? Um, there's always a first for everything. Thank you, Gerald, for getting me back on so quickly. Um, so there you have it. Um, the recipe is in the Rossmore News. Um, my next, for next week, I am going to be making Mediterranean summer salad, and it is so refreshing and perfect for this time of weather, this time of year and this type of weather. Um, it's the perfect thing that you could bring to your social distancing uh, barbecue that you're going to to share with you and your household partner um it's it's delicious so um anyhow i will see you all next week thank you so much for tuning in and um, i hope everybody has a good week thanks so much